Warrants are AP 1845-2, PR-1845, AP 1844, and AP 1844-DPW. Are we taking them separately? Do you feel like it, or do you want to just do it all at once? Uh, it's yes, I'm assuming you're going to pull out the proclamations. All right, yeah, I'm just doing, yes. Oh, um, you want to do the whole thing. I was just doing the warrants, so um, we'll take out the proclamations. Um, Resignation of Special Police Officer uh, Ian McDonald, Surplus Property Town Hall Electronics, Waiver of Right of First Refusal for Allergy Property, Granby 250th Parade, Sunderland 350th Parade, Hadley Media 300th. Board, 300th, 300th. Yeah, no, we, don't, we don't want them. Yeah. 50 years. We're, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're beyond 50 <laughs> now. So, uh, Hadley Board, uh, Media Board appointment of Linda Castro Navo. Navo. Uh, permission for highway contracts to execute and administered uh, by Frog per recent bids. Is there anything you want to take out of there and talk about separately? I'll make a motion to approve those items. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Uh, all about the highway one. Abstain from the highway one and all the other ones okay. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then we also have tonight Girl Scout Silver Awards. And my thing is upside down. There we go. It's right here. How do you get this to come around here? This one here? Yeah, see what happens. Uh, do it again. Do it again, do there it again. Go. Okay. Since 1916, the Girl Scouts' highest awards stand for excellence leadership. Awardees join generations of young women who made a difference in their communities, local and beyond. Join us as we celebrate the newest century of women who inspire us. And this is the Gold Silver Awards Ceremony, celebrating over 100 years of changing the world. Western Mass Ceremony is Tuesday, June 12th, 2018, and Central Mass is uh, <coughs> June 14th, 2018. And tonight we have two silver awards, and we'll start with Grace Keeler, and I have a proclamation for you. Grace Keeler is the resident of the town of Hadley, and whereas Grace Keeler has achieved the silver award as a member of Troop 11267, Hadley, Massachusetts, and the Girl Scouts of Western Massachusetts, and whereas Grace Keeler created in the project Bath Houses, and whereas Grace Keeler has completed the significant accomplishment, as earning the award requires many years of challenge and commitment to service, leadership, career exploration, and interest projects, including creating a project which will benefit the greater community in a substantial way. Whereas Grace Keeler has proudly served the Hadley community as a cadet in the Girl Scouts, acting as an example to youth, adult, and elder alike. Now therefore, we the Select Board of the Town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, do congratulate Grace Keeler on the occasion of her winning the Silver Award. We have no doubt that your achievements serve as an example to others, and we take great satisfaction that you are having a such a successful and distinguished career. Congratulations, given this 16th day of May in the year 2018. Congratulations. So, can you get a picture of Jeff? Yeah. Oh, with me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Stay closer. <laughs> 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 I was a girl scout too. So I'm very proud of the fact that you have attained this award. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, now we have Eva Blasapam Bami. Where? <laughs> whereas Eva Lasafame is a resident of the town of Hadley, and whereas East Eva Lasafame is it Eve or Eve? Eve? Eve, sorry about that. Lasafame has achieved the silver award as member of Troop 11267, Hadley, Massachusetts, and Girl Scouts of Western Massachusetts. And whereas Eve Lasafame created the project Clothes on the Road. And whereas Eve, Eve Lasafami has created the significant accomplishments as earning the award requires many years of challenge and commitment to service, leadership, career exploration, and interest projects, including creating a project which will benefit the greater community in a substantial way. Whereas Eve Lasafami A has proudly served the Eve Hadley community as the cadet in the Girl Scouts, acting as an example to youth, adult, and elder alike. Now therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley, Massachusetts, on behalf of the inhabitants, do congratulate Eve Lasafame on this occasion of her winning the Silver Award. We have no doubt that your achievements serve an example to others, and we take great satisfaction that you are having a, su a successful and distinguished career. Congratulations, given this 16th day of May in the year 2018. Congratulations. I'd like to ask the girls if you could um, tell us about your projects, if you would mind. Who would like to go first? You want to go first? That would be great. Um, so I collected clothes at the Goodman Library, and then I traveled the country, and I dropped them off at various locations around, like donation places, and then I made a quilt, um, and it like, has everything that I did on it. Mm -hmm. And I learned that the places that needed the most help were the places that couldn't get the help as easily. And like the like richer towns and stuff, they had all the help, but it wasn't much. It didn't really help the poor people who needed the help. So I dropped off clothes to people, and I had I, I liked it. Did you? It's a good project. What are some of the places you went, Eve? Um, you went across we did, country, I understand. Yes, we did one stop in California. Um, I think there was another one in Texas, and we did a Virginia one. Mm -hmm. The Arizona was the prison place. Arizona, Florida. Yeah. It was. <coughs> yeah, it was interesting trying to find places. You'd find places like these people are really poor, but they didn't have the infrastructure to have places that you could drop stuff off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's great. Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Houses, and we also did a poster on the disease that's killing bats to help people understand why the bats are good and what's killing them. And we also built bat houses to give to different people to hang up so that the bats, bats will go and live in them instead of like going in your house. So where where are they here in Hadley? Um, well, there's one in Camp Lewis Park and it's in... Chesterfield? No. no. South Hadley. South Hadley. Yeah. And then there's couple other ones. I know. So they don't go in caves anymore, they go in these bat houses. And what do the houses look like? They're made out of wood, so like they have a longer back and then a shorter front and a little top on the roof and they have wire on the inside that they'll cling on to when they go in there. Well I don't know if it's you're doing or not, but we saw a bat in our backyard for the first time in quite a while this year. So there were a lot of them when we moved to town and we hadn't seen them because of what you're talking about. So. Back. I've got a bat house on my barn. Nice. Go. South side. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of bats up at the campground. We should hang one up there. <laughs> Very nice. Congratulations. Very worthwhile projects. Thank you.
comments? Is there anybody here for public comments tonight? Aye. Aye. Nobody. Okay. <coughs> anybody have anything there? No? Okay. Uh, town administrator report. Okay. So I'll just go through this very briefly. Now that town meeting is done, we can turn our hands to all sorts of other interesting things to do. So there's quite a few updates here. First one is the stormwater permit, MS4. Uh, it looks like it's a go. They're down to one month before implementation by the US uh, EPA. There's absolutely no word from the US EPA that they're going to defer this. So we have to have our notice of intent, which is co basically completed and has to be submitted by October 1st, 2018. And then we have to jump on developing the stormwater management plan, complete the ID uh, procedures, construction for site runoff control, catch basin cleaning, street sweeping, winter road maintenance procedures, and stormwater infrastructure. All that has to be done by June 30th, 2019. So for the 2020 budget, we have to take all those operational concerns into account. So we have a year to work on that. But we're in pretty good shape. Um, the sidewalk and the ADA improvements, uh, that project is now uh, in process and it's scheduled to be completed this time next year. Hey David, were you able to get the list of the people that challenged that uh, stormwater MS4 permit? Yeah, it's down to one consolidated lawsuit at this point. Um, How many towns though? It's um, about four or five towns at this point are challenging it. Uh, it doesn't seem like that will have a material impact on implementation given the way the courts work. They're not going to make a decision in the next month. So, you know, we have to assume that this, this MS4 permit takes effect in about six weeks' time. Route 9 uh, and Street, Maple Street uh, uh, sewer line emergency repair done most of the work we have to wait for supplies to come in to complete that project which we will schedule as soon as possible fire substation update we need to schedule a ballot vote no later than September 15th I'll be asking the board to make that uh, that uh, decision tonight senior center update they submitted their application to the planning board we have a public hearing scheduled for June 19th where that will be at uh, Hopkins Academy at the gymnasium. We're going to set it up for 100 people. In the gym? In the gym. Okay. The two fire alarm projects for Town Hall and DPW, those the quotes were received. The uh, project was awarded to Alarm Works Fire Detection Systems, and we're expecting that work to begin next week. Um, for the regional accounting services, we, uh, we participated in a direct local technical assistance grant through PBPC. Uh, they put out a proposal, uh, request for proposals for accounting firms. Only one <coughs> proposal was received. Another proposal was submitted directly to us outside of the RFP process, so the financial management team is reviewing these two proposals. They've conducted interviews with the two accounting firms, and they should have a unified recommendation for you at your next meeting. Special town meeting update. We are working on the special town meeting. Next time we meet, I'll be asking you to set up a, a countdown schedule. Capital Planning Committee tried to meet on Monday, but they didn't make core, but administratively, they've revised some of the instructions to the departments. We're now looking at a five-year capital plan rather than, a, I'm sorry, we're looking at a 10-year capital plan as opposed to a five-year. And we're looking at an accelerated uh, schedule with capital submissions due by June 22nd. We usually have them submitted in August. Uh, that way the capital committee can have their work done <coughs> in advance of the selectmen closing the warrant on August 1st, which will mean give you between August 1st, September 19th to complete all of your work reviewing the warrant. Uh, public forum on October 
11th and October 18th is the special town meeting target date. Working on the closeout for FY18, uh, working with department heads to bring the budgets in for final uh, approval for keeping everything in the black where we can and working with the finance committee and the select board to transfer funds where we have to. And upcoming town actions, community events. We have a church supper coming up this Saturday. We have a Memorial Day parade, which we'll be talking about in a couple minutes on May 27th, and an Asparagus Festival June 2nd, and a polka mass on August 5th. And there are many other things happening in town too numerous to summarize here, but do take advantage of them and enjoy the town of Hadley. about 7.15, I think we can go ahead with the uh, public hearing on Hillside Pizza on premise malt and wine license. Do we have people here? Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Jack Lindner. I'm one of the managing partners with Hillside Pizza. Um, and we're looking to add a beer and wine license to our Muscle Street location up the road. Uh, we have a current license at our Ferguson location uh, that's in good standing. and. Um, yeah, we're looking to expand our menu. We, you know, we put a big emphasis on supporting the local uh, economy and buying from local businesses, and we're hoping to continue that trend by supporting local breweries and adding uh, yeah, beer and wine. I see that you have. Uh, you want to do an outside cafe? Uh, yeah, we have a little bit of outdoor seating right now, but we're kind of getting fencing around as well. Um, but yeah, currently it's. Just and it, in this license, does that entail having wine and beer out on the patio? Tim Nyhart would be the one that would make that final decision, but it has to be completely fenced in. Mm. And I don't believe it works for your entrance and exit for you to have wine out there, does it? Uh, um, I'd have to look into it. Okay. positive. I, I think it would just be the inside space at this time, yeah. and they can alter it afterwards. Yeah, I'm not sure how it would be different for Bernerston. We do have a little bit of outdoor seating in Bernerston as well, but that is <laughs> currently fenced in, so okay. we're working on that. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I just had one of you butters approach me. They've had noise complaints from the rock gym and they don't want any noise complaints from the pizza place. Certainly. So, yeah. So one of butters is pretty, pretty concerned about both properties. He's, oh. he's a buddy of both of you now. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we wrap up, I mean, we close up by 8 o'clock each evening. We don't. You know, play music very loud or anything like that. Uh, just recently, there was you know another tenant in the building who had more of a yoga spitting studio, and they you know kind of pumped out the music. I you know I haven't been aware that that's been a problem. You know, and, and since we've uh, and since we you close it, you close at eight o'clock. Yeah, we close by Certainly eight is within the bylaw of uh, ten o'clock curfew of, of sound. So yeah, I'm not sure. If, okay, have you heard any complaints? Um, we have coming? we have no outdoor music. It's all contained yeah, inside. Yeah, all so. in the building. Yeah, okay. there's no speakers outside or. I, I think that was your only question. Correct? That was that was the only question you asked me. So. I just mm -hmm. have one comment for you. If if it can be worked out with with uh, the building inspector and with licensing issues, I would encourage the outside seating area. Because uh, they're kind of few and far between in the town. Yeah, I think that's the line. Some of the other ones. As far as our question is concerned, as far as the customers wouldn't be walking the the alcohol out to the fence in area, it would be served to them out there, and they would be instructed, and there would be signage for them to contain it within that right. fenced in area. Mm -hmm. So there, that would be that would be the how that situation would work for us is that they would go sit down, and we would be serving them the alcohol in the fenced in area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, we also have in the works uh, having all of our servers uh, TIP certified as well. Exactly. Just to, you know, mm -hmm. it's a good starting place. Good for practice everybody. Yes. for everybody. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you guys go to the quarters, but I know they have that fenced in area. That oh, perfect. Yeah. 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 It's low so if it's anything like that. Definitely yeah. natural. They don't have a problem there. Yeah. So that's great. So, yeah. Certainly. Okay. So we can make a motion to approve. Second. Any further? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. To you Thank you. Appreciate it. Are you here for a particular project? We did it. South Maple. South Maple. Okay. <laughs> South Maple project it is. You made all the difference.
2016, we approached um, the Hadley Planning Board to uh, demolish the former Burger King and Florence Savings Bank uh, buildings in favor of building two new structures, two separate structures that are about 10,000 square feet. Uh, we, uh, over the last two years, have worked on refining that plan and have found uh, some additional retailers that had required us to rework the plan on site. So we. Uh, went back to the um, had the planning board with a different site layout, still two buildings um, with a slight increase. So now instead of 21,000 square feet, we have about 25,000 square feet on site. Uh, as part of our site plan approval, we were required to prepare a traffic study, full traffic impact study, prepared by our engineer who also prepared the plan that you have in front of you, uh, Ron Mueller and Associates, who unfortunately couldn't make it this evening. Um, and with that, he recommended. Um, some improvements not only internally on our site but also on South Maple Street to help improve vehicular flow, safety, turning movements, and the like. Um, the planning board being that they also are, they don't have any traffic engineers, requested that we have that peer reviewed by a, um, they gave us a couple names of people that they, firms they would like us to use. We ended up selecting Fuss and O'Neill to do a peer review of our uh, engineer's plan. Uh, they provided us with comments, and then between their engineer, uh, Fuss and O'Neill, and our engineer, Ron Mueller and Associates, came to the conclusion that this, the, striping, the restriping plan they have in front of you was the best option for South Maple Street. Um, the board voted to approve our project, obviously conditionally upon the select board, reviewing this as well. Uh, Melanie Carr from my office spoke to uh, David Nixon uh, many times, and then I also spoke with uh, Marlo Warner, DPW director, last week to review this plan. He had a couple questions for me, so I provided him with the history. Um, I don't know if he's, I haven't met him personally, but he said that uh, he was in favor of this plan, and still obviously uh, I'm here in front of you guys today to uh, request approval of that plan. I do know, and I'm sure you are all aware too, that Mass DOT is coming through at some point to Route 9. They are taking on South Maple Street as well and doing a similar plan, but also doing a more in-depth plan along South Maple Street. So our plan, we'd still like to implement it because it's part of our um, approval with the planning board. Um, as far as the method that the striping will be taking on the road, um, we had discussed grinding and then repaving and striping. We had discussed buffing it out and then restriping or blacking out the paint and restriping. Uh, Marlo Warner suggested that um, we either buff it or black it out. Once we do develop the final construction drawing sets, those recommendations that uh, Marlo and then the board has for us, we will implement that onto our construction drawings. Uh, all costs for this will be Occur, uh, incurred by WS Development and Mount Farm Small, so there's no cost impact onto the town. So, if you have any questions or require any history, I'm happy to happy to provide anything for you guys. Can you just say where? What are you doing on the side of South Maple Street exactly? Yeah. So, because this is all confusing to me. Sure. Yeah, I can help you. Out. <laughs> I can help you out a little bit. So, if you're um, if you're looking at the plan uh, from this location over here, mm -hmm. this is the AT&T Envision Showcase building. Mm -hmm. This is the old Florence Bank, KFC, and then People's Bank that's in through here. Mm -hmm. So currently this intersection here um, mm -hmm. was designed for right in, right out only, right. but it it's poorly designed right now, so we are making sure that that is a right in, right out only. So that will reduce and discourage cross traffic going from Hampshire to Mountain Farms Mall. Mm -hmm because that is a four lane road that is that is there. If you move further down, so if you had south, mm -hmm. then on South Maple, 
this plan um, has the same turning movements that it does before, but it provides an additional lane on the when you're exiting um, uh, Mountain Farms Mall. So there are three lanes there instead of just the yeah, it's two three, and a half. yeah, it's a wide, it's very yeah. wide there. So what it allows us to do without taking any of the green space away from it on either side is to work within those mm -hmm. and reduce it to more appropriate or comfortable widths for cars mm -hmm. that go through. And then obviously the biggest thing that you see in South Maple is a reduction from two lanes going north, two lanes going south, to a single lane each way with a center turn lane. Mm -hmm. uh, the center turn lane uh, provides an area of refuge for vehicles turning left into either property, uh, Mount Farm Mall and Hampshire Mall, therefore reducing um, cross intersection turning movements. There's a dedicated lane for someone to take a left without having any ongoing traffic or traffic behind them trying to swerve into the right lane to avoid any of those turning movements. So, um, Do you know if our public safety folks have, I mean, I actually watched a couple of the planning board meetings and I heard the discussion, yeah. but do you know if the fire, the fire chief and police chief spend an awful lot of time yeah. there every day? In uh, 2016, the um, fire chief and police chief did look at this mm -hmm. um, with us. They didn't provide us with anything formal in writing. We presented the same plan in 16 and then reminded the board that we were doing the same thing in 18. They said we didn't need to do any further evaluation mm -hmm. due to the minimal increase in size of our plan. So at, in 2016, they had <coughs> but since then we haven't we haven't had any conversation with them. Our conversations have been limited to the town administrator and Marla Warner and uh, Tim Nyhart. The only I guess three big things that Marlo uh, wanted to ensure was that the all the work would be done at night. Yeah, and he did day. mention that to us as well. And then uh, permitting from the DPW as far as retiring water sewer lines, things like that, yep. um, needed to be done. Yep. And then also that to make it clear that all associated costs are picked up by WS development, I guess, rather than yep. anything with, with the town. Yeah, yep. details, police details, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. Of course, he. Uh, those were three things that he mentioned to me, so that's not a surprise, and we're yep. we're on board with all of that. So if it needs to be written into as conditions of approval, I don't know how you guys do that, then we're happy to have those as well. And the, the new structures that are going in, you said they're two separate structures? Two separate buildings, Total yes. Total about 25,000 Yeah, feet. one is about 14,500 and the other is about 10, okay. 10 and change, 10, 8, I think. And are these going to be strips similar to what's across the street? I, should, I, I do have a plan. I can show you it if you yeah, care to see it. it. Yeah, it's good. I can show it to you guys. Very good you guys, so I brought a couple copies. So... This is the new plan. <coughs> so you see the AT&T Envision Showcase building is staying mm -hmm. in place. Um, KFC is staying in place for this round. And then just, <coughs> I guess you can take some peek at the renderings that we presented to the planning board as well. This one on your left would be the first building here. So is this like a courtyard in between? Yeah, we're, we'll call it, <coughs> for lack of a better phrase, like a miniature muse area where we can have spillover um, patrons on that. We provide a nice public space for people to stay and shop and consider other options as well and not just walk into one and leave. They can grab some food that they will be getting at one of these restaurants sit outside and the like. So you're leaving the bank, Kentucky, uh, Fried chicken and eight, 18D? Yes, the bank is owned uh, a separate ownership. Yeah, okay. people's separate ownership. 18, 18T and Vision Showcase have turned. Um, so they're open and operating. Um, no, if or when we pursue uh, another phase, we'll look, be looking at KFC as well. And when are you going to get the results from your outside review? From Foss and O'Neill? Yeah. They already did it all. They already did it all. This plan includes Yeah, that plan includes, yeah, that plan includes okay. um, was our engineer's original plan, received comments from Foss and O'Neill, we had edited that, and that was what was submitted to the planning board. Okay. And when when is your construction scheduled? Yeah, we'd, um, we'd like to start construction in July or August of this year. Is that for the cuts on the roadway or for this? 
Uh, that'd be for the entire project. That we haven't yet gone out to bid for contractors of when to get a schedule of which of what work would be done first or how it would be done sequentially. I guess I was talking about the road. When yeah. That piece. When are, just like, do you have a scheduled date? Yeah. Well, um, it would be. We would. I think we'd like. We'd love to do it this year before we get into winter conditions. Um, on be that nice road. before school. Came back. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Back, yeah. 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 Um, yeah right. So we're, we would love to target mid-July start date, um, but we're, mm -hmm. depending on how fast we can get our consultants to churn out plans, mm -hmm. um, we have obligations to deliver uh, these buildings to some retailers mm -hmm. in um, June, June, July 20th, 2019. So we have, we have some work to do. And would you be redoing your whole internal, sorry, your whole internal roads there, yeah. Um, like right here, would all this road be yes. redone? That's all redone. Okay, redone, restrained. So that will be closed for some time. Yep, that'll be closed. We'll likely have. What we'll end up having is while because they're slightly relocated internally, mm -hmm. um, roads will be open or one side will be open while the other's being worked on. So they're always it's really only people's face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll be think. egress and ingress going in and out through all the entrances so just one thing i would encourage is uh, advanced communication with select board town david uh, yep. as far as you know just kind of keeping us in the loop so that way we're not having to to reach out to ask where the product is so that way sure. we can keep people informed on, especially on the striping project not so much you know the building instruction but, sure uh just so we can kind of plan around students coming back and things like that so. i'm ha happy to come back um at any point, if you'd, if you'd like to, not a problem. Anything where Manny's with? Is that uh, nothing yet? That would be hopefully in the, the second the phase. Road. Yeah, okay. we're uh, we're in early, very early pre-development stages right now, but um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, a so lot what of retail. Do you need, what do you need from us tonight? I just need you to approve the plan on South Maple Street with whichever conditions you want. I know. Um, Subject to any order of conditions from the DPW. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and what about, um, just, I know it's been a while since Mike and Mike saw this. Mm -hmm. Do we want to, and again, I'm happy to approve it, <coughs> but just subject to any further comment from the sure. public right. safety public. Right. 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 Yes, police yeah. and fire, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do that. And a, and a state, how, how far out is the state? Is it worth talking to the state again at this point? Because it's been two yeah. years since you originally planned this, and they're only looking at another two years down the line for their... I just saw an email from the state, because I'm also on the stakeholder um, email, and I okay. think they were looking to start having a discussion, and I think they wanted to do their plan in 2021. Okay. What, where they were starting on 9 and South Maple, we're, I'm not sure. Right. Well, they're, they plan on going all the way to the bike path, too, also. So. Yes, that's it. yes, correct. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve um, these plans for WS development in the Mountain Farms Mall, subject to um, further comment from the DPW director and public safety personnel. Okay. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you for cleaning that up. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. Happy to do it. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all very much. If you want to keep any of these, um, you're more than welcome to keep whatever you like. We'll take one off the end line. Do you need hard copies of the actual plan of South Maple at all? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good luck to Thank you. 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 Memorial Day Parade. Um, we have, uh, that will be um, <coughs> Sunday. Sunday. I'm just pulling it up. Uh, May 27th. Um, 2 p.m. for Route 9 begins at 115. Formation time begins at 115 at the American Legion, 162 Russell Street. And we also have a schedule. Um, there will also be refreshments afterwards at the Legion. Um, from the Legion, thanks. And they want to thank to one and all for the support of our veterans and helping the parade of uh, success um, in the past also. And that was from John Karish. Uh, you can call John Karish, uh, Tom Stolarski, the Legion, or Gene Baxter if you would like to participate in the parade. All are welcomed. Uh, we also invite any
town officials that would like to be participants. We've had um, finance committee uh, joined us. The school committee has joined us. Um, so uh, we would love to have you all join us again. Thank you. Uh, we do have another schedule where um, so we come at the, we do the cemeteries in the morning, and any of the select board that would like to participate in that, that would be great. Is anybody not going to be here? I will be working, unfortunately. <coughs> oh, I'll be here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Probably make the two o'clock in the afternoon, or you make some of the ones I, in the morning, John. I probably got to work in the morning, but okay. I shouldn't be out. I'll, I'll be on the bus with the Joyce. Thank you. <laughs> we'll show Christian. I can. I can. I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this will be my thirtieth. My thirtieth year. I'll be there as soon as I. Can. Thirty-first year. Yeah. I have to train my wife on uh, driving farm equipment so she can take my place in the parade. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's, that's fun. Yeah. So I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I think we could. I don't know how to drive a tractor. <laughs> um, okay, so that one starts at 1045, and they usually meet, uh, meet at 1045 at the Legion, and we go to the first cemetery is at 1115. So um, for all those of us, and they, okay. they do pick up the Boy Scouts and the band at uh, Holy Rosary Cemetery, so it's, uh, and they do North Hadley, down the center of North Hadley, so that's quite a big accomplishment in the morning before we get to the afternoon parade, so come one, come all. Right. Don't forget your red, white, and blue. My red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. and they, uh, they did ask permission to use the uh, senior center lot of the parking area. Mm -hmm. No, you signed a uh, letter to that effect. Is there any objection by the board to allowing the, to the use of the town property for staging purposes? Mm -hmm. no. Never has been an issue. Mm -hmm. We're more than happy to have oh, them use fine. it. Well, okay. Wouldn't want to start anything this year. Well, we did <laughs> Free cash certification schedule update. David, do you want to? Sure. This is something that uh, we implemented last year. If you remember, for the fall town meeting for last year, we received the free cash number from the state very late, uh, and there was a lot more than we th than we thought we were going to get. So. We resolved at that time to uh, put together a free cash certification calendar <coughs> so all the people who are engaged in uh, certifying our free cash know exactly what to do and when to do it by. And uh, so this is just an update of that, uh, uh, of that certification process. The only things that have changed are the dates to reflect the calendar differences between 2017 and 2018. I'll make a motion to approve the calendar. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Water abatement, 44 Mount Warren Road. Uh, this looks to be like a um, town error. The software, software error. Software error. Uh, the house has been empty for a number of years. So we would like to do an abatement to this property. Make a motion to approve the abatement due to the town's error. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No stain. We have another abate water abatement at 180 Russell Street. And that would be the same reason there was an error um, by our software. Meter was removed and water shut down before this building period. Okay, they didn't get the form in time. No. Make a motion to approve the second abatement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Thank you. Senior Center and Library updates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any too many updates other than what we already discussed about the meeting, the planning board meeting, everything being submitted yesterday, and the June nineteenth mm -hmm. review meeting. Um, trying to think if there's anything else off the top of my head. There was this one 
change order, it looks like, that came in, but I was not aware of that. Um, trying to think if there is anything else, but I so believe that's... Maybe I missed it. What's been submitted and what's, as far as the planning board, is it's going to the planning board now? It has been submitted to the planning board, all the plans, and now it'll be subject to peer review, and then, you know, depending on the outcome of those comments of the peer review, can go forward with the project. And then at that point, the planning board votes on it. Is that what happens? Or approves it, whatever? Hearing. hearing. Yes, there's a hearing at that point. So I think, I believe at the hearing, any questions at that time that come up can be answered. And sometimes there's always, and I can foresee it, a continuation. Yeah. They already went on record saying that it would be a continuation even before they had the information. Um, I'd actually encourage um, select board members of that, that meeting. It's not very long, Christian, right? Um, but one. The section of their planning board meeting last night relative to, it's really the two projects, because remember they asked for the joint drainage plan as well as the um, parking, joint <coughs> parking. And then they, are, they also at the meeting last night asked for um, a street view um, sketch of from Middle Street of the library showing the senior center in the back. Um, that there was a bit of a surprise to, um, I was gonna say ROP, because I'm on, the, I'm on the library building committee, <coughs> but um, the architect wasn't expecting that because the library project obviously has only um, been, you know, we're only a couple of months in compared to how far along the, the um, senior center project is, so. Um, but at any rate, you know, I think there were um, there was some commentary and questions asked, and I, I, they started right at seven, and maybe it was about it rolled right 20, into it. 15, yeah. 20 minutes of that. Yeah. So if you get a chance and you can go to Hadley Media, I think it's worth um, you kind of get a sense of of where we're heading. And there was a question too regarding the current Goodwin building being brought into that project and the parking and that kind of thing. But I think as a select board, we haven't identified any future purpose for that building as of now. So the parking, it's a separate lot. All those things should, be, um, should be a totally different project from these two projects on that site. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other thing. Sorry, I'm just going back. When was the last time our select board meeting? When was the last time we had senior center meetings? Um, Last time we did talk about the prequal for the contractors, right. and there were four, I believe, and now they re-looked at the criteria, and it doesn't have to be as much of an audited review, but it's still reviewed mm -hmm. um, finances, and so now there's nine out of 10 of those contractors much meet better. the approval, so that's much better. We have a much better field to get quotes from um, and yeah, uh, and those are the big things right now, kind of looming with that project. So, uh, really That's waiting, good thing, waiting though, for the planning board and then open it up. getting the contractor, the bids out to the contractors. So, I have just a general question about the one that didn't make the cut: <clears throat> was that because they did not have reviewed uh, financials, or because they did not? All I know, this is all I know, is it gets all the financial things get reviewed and it goes into a calculator let's say okay. and all the other contractors got a 30 or something and this contractor got a zero yeah. so i don't know the reason exactly but it had to do with the f series of formulas you run it through okay. and i tried looking it up online to try to understand it but it's very in-depth <laughs> so not a quick thing to just glance over then as far as the um, the library uh, building project so um library building committees meeting every other week at this point so we have our next meeting on monday um, at the last meeting we spent you know a good portion of the time was really focused on two areas one was any issues that um, related to the joint project work you know to get prepared for last night's planning board meeting to make sure that um, the library project opm um, you know, was, they've been working very cooperatively, so that, that's been a really good thing. And uh, making sure the senior center had everything that they needed from the library folks. And then the second thing is um, we do have a 
subcommittee that was recommended by the um, Mass Library Building Association, uh, the, the, the grant providers. And part of the process, they recommend that you do have um, a committee that's focused on green issues, you know, so solar and, and efficiencies and things like that. So um, they have started to meet, so they've been offering some suggestions for improvement. Um, so those were all, all delivered to the, the architect as well. Um, so that's all, it's all moving along well. Okay. Yeah, and our next Senior Center Building Committee meeting is tomorrow, Thursday at 2.30. So if anybody's interested in coming. Thank you. Yes. So uh, a couple of things. We met with the, the treasurer and chief financial advisor today in order to coordinate the borrowings in order to make sure the cash that we need is available when we need it. Uh, so we did quite a bit of work in terms of trying to figure out sh what the length of borrowing should be and what how much should we be borrowing for for these two projects. And, one of the questions that we had is a timing issue for the library. And given that we're now under review by the planning board from the senior center, how fast is that project likely to go? When are we likely to be uh, uh, going out to bid for a general contractor? And how does that fit in with the library's uh, schedule? And then who needs cash when? So we'll probably be coming to you and just be asking questions about those kinds of logistics. And then in terms of satisfying the uh, planning board requirements <coughs> for the site plan for the senior center, there was a lot of coordinating design work that was not part of the original design project. So that's the reason why I have the change order here. This change order is for 26140 for uh, fixed fees with a $500 reimbursable expense budget for copying and mailing, things like that. So recommended by the planning, by the uh, OPM and the Senior Center Building Committee. So this 26,000 is just because of the additional requirements, is that? Okay. Yeah. It's because of the coordination of the two projects. Yeah. That's what it comes down yeah. to, okay. And the money for this is coming from? It would come from the contingency budget for the Senior Center project, okay. which is approve. about 700,000 right now. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. Um, next will be the annual town meeting. Um, treasure collector and sub fire station ballot vote. So we need to set a date no later than September 15th and no earlier than 35 days after the annual town meeting. So from June to September 15th. Right. Mm -hmm. So the select board have to take a vote. They have to vote on the form of the question. They have to pick a date when this ballot is going to occur. Uh, I tried to double it up for the state primary, but uh, unfortunately the powers that be said no. Isn't that crazy? I mean, think about it. Wouldn't, wouldn't that make the most you this can't do sense. I know we went through this before. You can't do it on a state yeah. docket yeah. and you can't do it on a federal docket. Yep. Yeah. When's the state primary? September 4th. Oh, that's tough. Because yeah. <coughs> this is the classic thing where you want to catch people right. when, they're, when they're not on vacation. And of course, this is like all vacation. Yeah. So I would think that we'd either want to do it at the very beginning. Before. When's, do you know when the last day of school is? Do you guys? June 20. I don't know about the top of my head. I think it's like the 22nd. 22nd, I think it is. Yeah, the 22nd, too. So are we better off doing it at the beginning or waiting until the end of August and then you're hitting the beginning of the school? You said the state election is the 4th, September. September 4th is the primary. How is Jess with the finances for another? Well, we have to do it anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah, but I mean, falling in one fiscal year, one yeah, fiscal yeah. She she did budget for a special ballot. If you have another one in after the fall town meeting, the one that's not budgeted for. Yeah, but that'll be on next year. Right? Does she have enough funds if we do it before? Right. Do we need to? Oh, wait I see what you're saying. Before fiscal year is over. Good question. I don't know. 
you know, before July 1st. Yeah, I mean, we would have to do it reserve fund transfer. Yeah. Ahead and did, did the <coughs> clerk weigh in on her preference for anything? She said she was most concerned that we didn't do it any sooner than the 35 days. Um, oh, yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than that, she didn't have preference. So, I, as long as there's no money issues, I would say let's do it sooner rather than later, get it out of the way. Or right, to it's fresh on people's minds right. at least. You yeah. get too far away and then people start re reconsidering the whole thing. Yeah. Well, that would, I would suggest we do it the 20th, 21st. Yeah, maybe <coughs> right after school. I mean, the problem is a lot of people do go away after school ends, so. Yeah, um, I do go away that week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I know sometimes I'll take my kids uh, to Buffalo, like, right after they get up from school, so. Yeah, 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 so. It is the third week of lock, uh, June, so people are starting their vacations already, too. Yeah. So, the Thursday. So last day of school is the 20th? It is. Yes. And that's uh, Wednesday. Yeah. So, can we do it on that Wednesday? Can we do it on a school day? So if parents are dropping off their kids, they can vote. Yeah, it's the 35th day. Okay. So I think you have to wait one more. Wait one more. Okay. So I'd argue for the 21st. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we do it on the 21st. Yeah. 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 Uh, 12 to 8. Right. And this is a ballot, so you can you can um, do Absol an absentee, absentee ballot. ballot. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Either that or the Tuesday the 26th, the week after, would be my two choices. Like you said, if they're going to go, they're going to go that first weekend. Then. Thank you. Because then the following week runs into July 4th, <coughs> the following weekend. Right, that, so. yeah. one week, uh, yeah. So you're better off to do it that week of I'm school gets out. So I'm, I'm absent to either. <laughs> 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 All right, so the 21st, Probably we'll do it. Yeah. And it'll be 12 to 8. Okay. 12 to 8. And the form of the question is written down. Shall the town of Hadley be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to building a fire substation for the fire department, yes or no? Um, yeah. You can change building to build. I think I'm okay. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Issued in order to build. Yeah. yeah. And any other issues for non-binding questions, possibly or not? Um, we had time to think about it before. Then that we when do you have to have uh, we have now from now when do you have to have the questions in tomorrow. <laughs> so you got 24 hours to think about it. <laughs> you have the language on the treasurer collector? Uh, yeah, that doesn't go to a ballot vote. That goes to the, uh, that goes directly State. to the legislature. That's just going to straight to them. Okay. Right, so we'll talk about that in a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what day do we decide on? 21st. 21st. Thursday. You can do a save the date to man on Facebook. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go to treasure collector. Okay, well, let's take a vote on the ballot. Yeah. Oh, oh. All right. I'll motion. Entertain a motion. Yeah, motion to uh, hold that special election on June 21st. And uh, with the wording that we have here, just changing the word from building to build. And the polling hours from 12, 12 to 8. eight. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so uh, we just got the certified votes for the town uh, annual town meeting today. So uh, we are now in the position of petitioning the Great General Court to uh, pass an, uh, two acts of special act, uh, special legislation to change the treasurer and the town tax collector from elected to appointed positions. So if you give me the authorization to file that legislation, that would that petition, that would be good. Who would submit that? Sorry? Who, who submits that? that Is that John, John Seibach? Okay. And I've talked to him about it, so he knows it's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Will of the people. I should have did it at the public comment, but I did watch the second uh, portion of the annual meeting, and I apologize for not making it. I had some personal problems I had to take care of, but uh, the couple questions that the people did have, they're more than willing to call me and I'll answer them. I, I'm not ignoring them. They got a couple of them do have my number, so they're, they're welcome to call me anytime. Do you want to give your number out now? It's on the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's there. They know where to find it. It rings. I'll put that on Facebook mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Leave a message. <laughs> they know where you live. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Moving on to the infamous North Hadley Village Hall. So we talked about uh, this earlier in the year. We said that we would bring it back for consideration after the annual town meeting. So. We tried to go out to sell to, to sell the North Hadley Village Hall. We had a, a one proposal. Long story short, we didn't uh, clinch the deal, so we're starting the process again. The municipal building committee came in front of you and said that your your original RFP had too much associated with it, and this is the original RFP. So. Uh, do you want to put together a group to study this or to work on this or not? what do you want to do? I've been following this for the last couple of years. I think it's been a couple of years that it's been the worst. Oh, oh more. <laughs> uh, is there a reason why we haven't gone to a, it would probably be a commercial real estate specialist and contract for their services rather than go through a typical RFP? because um, typically you'd probably see a better response with actual marketing and somebody you know working for their money rather than, than just getting a few responses to an RFP. Mm -hmm. You mean like a cold book or a plot? Yeah, 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 something along those lines. And, and maybe they can't do any better and maybe they'll, it'll, you know, but I, I think it would be maybe a good idea to see what they can do for us, what they can offer, and then mm -hmm. let them take it off our plate and see if they can run with it and get it sold. So human laws do anticipate you doing that, that you can work with a real estate agent in order to sell your property. There are certain things you have to adhere to. Right. But it is doable. Okay. I mean, can can we investigate that and maybe? Sure. I don't know. And I'm asking the board if they'd be in favor of that. You know, they get it shouldn't take any longer than a week or two to get a response back. I don't from. care how we get rid of it. I know that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> and I won't forget rid of it. But if we can squeeze out a little town bit more meeting money, voted yeah. how many years yeah. ago? Yeah, and just to reiterate, um, the building committee along with their recommendations. I mean, just to make make sure everything's in there again this time. Right. And you know, I'm all for putting whatever restrictions we need to on the property, but it, maybe, and, and if the building there, committee doesn't want to take it up, I'd be happy to reach out to some realtors and see. There's a lot of things in so. in this RFP that I did not care for. Right. And some of it was um, the restrictions. I can understand keeping the outside of the facade as it is right now yeah. because it's a it's the uh, Center of North Hadley, and that's what right. the Historical they, Commission they did wanted. They the whole thing with the old fire station on West Street also. Yes. The communication center there. They yes. Kept the outside But same. they had things in that in that RFP about going in and inspecting and making sure this <coughs> wasn't changed or that wasn't. Yeah. I mean, that's... There was a boat ramp in this and the water access when there was a boat ramp right down the road. Exactly. Floor. So I don't think that that should have any bearing on that piece of property. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would like to see a, a reconfiguration okay. of this. Yes. If y'all remember at the meeting, I believe it was at the mid-March, <clears throat> y'all had asked for the committees to come back in that have participated in the original RFP and put all the restrictions in and asked them to go back through and make the edits and remove things that no longer fit in. And then with town meeting, it sort of got shoved off to the side. Yeah. Those committees should have been working on that. And then well, with y'all's invitation, they should have all the information ready to come back in for this RFP yeah. without mm -hmm. all of the extra stuff because that was the, the takeaway that everybody had. We so just mentioned we, it again a couple of meetings ago with uh, historical too. So why don't we Ginger do that and get them, to, yep. get them to come in? That's yeah, fine. Today. And do that the 20th? 20th. Yep. If they we have it, we can reach out to them to see if they have anything for us. Yeah, let don't. historical and the building committee know that we, we need it now. Because mm -hmm. right. if, if we can get that and then go 
shop real estate agents and then say these are the restrictions we need then we can actually get a market analysis of the value of the property and see where we stand mm -hmm. and see if that our if that response to the opportunity we had is worthwhile. Well. great idea. I mean the other big restriction there too is the fire trucks are there so is right. there anything we can do with those fire trucks so that it's a clean cut on that building? We're going to have to wait until after the ballot to find out. Okay. Sure. But still that would yeah. be a couple it, years off right? Yeah it can all get underway now. <coughs> But do we have any options? Do we have any storage? options? So we don't have yeah. to put yeah, we talked about finding temporary space or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Find yeah. 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 A bunch of tobacco yeah. barns. Like we did years ago. <laughs> but, and David, could could you follow up and find out what sort of parameters there are? On yep. So I'm thinking that I work on the front end documents, which would cover the, the commercial real uh, broker and uh, the, the, the committee provides all the, uh, the appendices that uh, would spell out the details of, you know, terms of use, et cetera, and any historic preservation restriction, all that kind of stuff. It would be nice to have it gone before fall town meeting. <laughs> and how would a real estate agent work into that RFP process? So you need to, you need advertising, you need to have certain forms, you need to have uh, certain disclosures, of the sample purchase and sale agreement, um, the, 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 what am I trying to think of, the historic district restrictions of any kind. Uh, those are the kinds of things that... But those are already in the RFP, right? They're in the RFP. Yeah. yeah. But is there a process in order to figure out what realtor to use, or is that something that... Let me look into it. It's been a while since That's I've looked yeah. at that okay. particular so section that of the laws. Yeah. So I Basically, uh, I assume whatever would be the best value for the town as far as their yeah. commission and what they could do for us is yeah. for the money. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hampshire Council of Governments. This is, that's why you're here. I'm so sorry. I should have taken that out of no worries. That way. Yeah. So if you guys remember, <laughs> two weeks ago, about before town meeting, um, we had a discussion about the HCD councilor that um, only one person had run for and then declined the position or was ineligible, something like that. Um, so I have been the HCD councilor, also appointed and run the last time it was available. Um, I will be leaving at the end of July to attend business school and my term expired in April. So there's now a couple months where we need another HCD counselor. Um, I mean, ideally we could get somebody for the full one year term. Um, yeah, I'm sure some of you guys obviously which are familiar with kind of the you three familiar with the backstory of the HCD and we're going to be pulling out within the next, is it one more year that we have? One more year. Yeah. One more year. 2019. But we've still been doing a lot of work with them. I have a lot to update everyone on if they care to hear it. So has there been any progress made in finding a person that might want to step up to become the next counselor? So the select board made an announcement to invite letters of interest. We haven't received any. Okay. Because they meet on Thursdays, right? Yeah. Okay. When do they meet? Is that? Is it one Thursday a month? Or? I want to see the third Thursday. Third Thursday. That's what I remember too. Yeah, at any time in particular, or is it 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock. PM. Hey, never mind. Six. Pardon me. 6 p.m. And then they have a few committees, depending on which you can choose to sit on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do it. I have another commitment on Thursday nights for the next couple of months. Um, I'm not sure they really want me there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I think if we push it out. Uh, yeah, I'd just say if we maybe we can um, between now and the next select board meeting put the pedal to the metal and try to find somebody. I, I can think of a couple of people right now. If they knew it was more of a temporary, they might be willing to. So we could all kind of yeah. reach out, see if we can get some names. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have anybody. No worries, I'll still attend the meetings. Um, obviously, I can't vote on anything. Hadley, while we're not one of the, the biggest players, we certainly have a good number of votes because it's weighted in terms of how they vote. So they are very eager to get somebody else on the, on the council. And Belchertown obviously just took the vote this week. So. Right, right. So they're doing exiting 2020? Yeah, I assume it must be a year after us. Right. Okay. So you wanted, I'm sorry, he said he had some other information to relay. 
Actually, well, it was mostly about the letter that went out about a month ago now, mm -hmm. I think, that a lot of you probably read. So if you had any questions specifically about that, I know it's some select boards have reacted to it and some kind of got the gist of it and don't really care to talk about it too much. So. Well, the, I mean, the big question I, I had, I think, which is really what kind of played out in the, to a point as the underlying theme in, in the press coverage was um, that the way that the letter was worded, it seemed to be with great conviction that this liability was going to exist. And understanding, you know, the whole history of the HCG and all of that, has there been any confirmation from anybody at the state level that that indeed is the case, that that liability would enter to the, to the county towns regardless of? We're still trying to get a 100% definitive, but mm -hmm. yes, like our opinion is now has, it would default to the towns. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't default up to the state, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So because the towns that were part of the county before the county government was dissolved and turned into the HEG with all that story, right. and the liability would go back to the towns. Right, and most of this liability is arising from the old, uh, what we called the sanitarium back in the day, right? The old Hampshire County. Yeah, the Hampshire employees County. specifically for their OPEB, essentially. Right, so that would have been all of the CNAs and nurses and administrators that were associated right. with the property in Leeds. Mm -hmm which was eventually sold privately, but it's the benefit, the pension, and the OPEB liability associated with those individuals? Yes, pension, OPEB, and there was a workers' comp case. Not terribly much, but it's in there. Um, yeah, to the tune of a total of 4.6 million. <coughs> Had the share of that, which you all saw on the letter, would be about 154,000, mm -hmm. which is annually, after you do the math, um, about 10,000. So my question is, if this liability, does this fall on all of the towns in the county, regardless yeah. of their membership yes. in the HCG? Yeah. And so and what? Who's going to be running? Yeah. yeah, so regardless of whether or not we're still in HCG when this falls on the towns, it mm -hmm. doesn't have any bearing on how much we're paying. Okay. Yeah, because I know Northampton was still uh, liable, even though they aren't a member of HCG. Seems purported to be. Yeah. Like that's what we're trying to yeah. Do. Yeah. 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 Yeah that they received from the Masons for selling that? It was collected by HCG. Yes. And, and HCG what, did, what did they do with that? Through. So they should have put that in an account. Yeah, and they still have it. I mean, they still have a reserve funds to a point where they can continue operating for a couple of years. The problem is, while you have that bulk number to start with, as the HCG puts it, you still have annually $300,000 that you start at the beginning of your year that you have an obligation to pay. So while you do still start with that big chunk of change, it's only a matter of time before that catches up with you if all of your programs and services came in equal revenue versus costs. So. I think I think the point, though, that, that Joyce is making, and, and not, please don't take this as we're arguing with you yeah. and you're representing yeah. HCG, but just the talking points is that at the time that that sale took place, given, you know, one of the issues that I had had from a management standpoint was that if you knew that you had this revenue that was generated from a balance sheet item, right, and you also had a liability associated with that same balance sheet item, the prudent fiscal thing to do would be to establish a reserve using those funds to make sure that you covered that liability, and that didn't happen. So I think part of the argument that's going to take place on the part of the cities and towns will be what the, what the heck. Um, I mean, they should have put their money into an OPEB there at that point when they sold the property to pay for um, those people's retirements. And it was part of a um, town pension. It was county pension. County pension system. Which, um, but I think it's all connected, though. Um, yeah, it was a county retirement we'll, system. We'll yeah. revert back to county retirement. Um, 
will they be running this after, or just each individual town will have to still cover whatever the amount is? I don't know by default, but there's already some talk at the ACG of like how to try and do this gracefully, so set up arrangements ahead of time or whatever to make sure it's all administered properly. So they haven't even got that far yet. No. They still haven't gotten an opinion from the state as to where they're going to be at. You said the state saying we're not going to pay for it. Have you, do you have any update data? Did you yeah, I received a telephone call from the Department of Revenue and they were asking, you know, <coughs> beyond just the charter agreement where Hadley was made a member of the uh, of the HCG. Was there any other kind of agreement, side letter, or, or contract that we signed for that? And to the best of my knowledge, we have not. So the Department of Revenue is looking very closely at the enabling legislation for the Council of Governments and the charter agreement for anybody who participated as their main guide. and. There's not a lot there that speaks about past liabilities or my question and you anticipated it was if there was some sort of giveaway of goodies, you know, who, who gets that and how does that happen? Um, they spent it all, there's nothing. I, I know. Do you have any cheerful news? <laughs> 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 Wonderful well, cost savings. So <laughs> the letter really was supposed to have some of an optimistic pitch at the end. I mean, there's only so many ways you can say, like, listen, here's the amount of money right. that if we go under, you would be liable for. Right. You can put that as kindly as possible and try to not make it sound like a threat. Right. But some people still took it that way. And it really was meant to be more of a call to action to say, listen, the HCG really is trying to rethink how they structure themselves and how they run their programs, both financially and actual day-to-day -day operations. So they're inviting just towns to get involved, whether or not it means like reversing your decision to pull out or just like actually coming to meetings and having sit-down conversations with counselors and just learning more about it. Um, they're all ears to hear like what Hadley could use specifically or what the other towns could use specifically. Um, they, but they, they, we have them in <clears throat> on a couple of occasions to talk about these things, uh, things that we needed, and we haven't really had seen anything from them. You know, they never they showed followed up, when, up they on They showed up it. when you guys were talking about withdrawing. They came quick to talk yeah. about the benefits. They, but yeah. they've been here another few times, yeah. actually, But their too. presentations have all been the same, and we're still not getting anything out of it, but it looks like a bill. Well, and I'm again, yeah, and I'm afraid, I mean, there, there is, the you know, with any organization, quite a, quite a bit out of it. They, can, they can get it elsewhere. Yeah. And I, I think it's just, you get to the point in any organization where kind of a, a line gets, the line gets crossed, and, and you, you can cross your fingers and you hope, but at some point the numbers just don't work. Um, and the only thing you can do is either salvage what remaining assets there are and try to reform it into a completely different entity. Um, and that can work very successfully if like, you know, you're a software company and you, you have something that's that's got value to it and it stands on its own. But with a service organization like H HCG, it's really hard mm -hmm. to do that. And unfortunately, you know, it's going to continue to look like and smell like. And so people who haven't been <laughs> you know, that's the hard part um, because the ideas that the different towns came up with, you know, we talked about shared services, accounting and HR and things like that, but, but you have to then make the leap of faith, and that leap of faith is going to go to track record, so when you're dealing with the exact same people, yeah. a lot of people don't want to put more money into something that's already failed, and, and I'm, I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I will be, that's my argument had been if perhaps there's a change in leadership, um, then that might be a, a different story, but it's just, it's track record, you know? So. Yeah. Has the HCG thought about um, moving into smaller quarters? I've always, I've always wondered why are they where they are? Uh, you mean the quarters? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to park. Uh, you get searched every time you go in there. Got something to hide. 
you know, and uh, it's not a ADA except accessible, and it's expensive to run and god awful expensive to fix up. Uh, the only time I've heard it come up was when um, talking about where some of the other services, because there's a range of services the HD provides, so they try to find a way to salvage those even if they wound down and have to close their doors. How much you can really do that without taking on the liabilities of the parent organization is tricky. But that was the only point where I heard anything, well, where would they live? Where would those services try and, I mean, if they spun off onto their own thing, where would mm -hmm. they uh, live? But besides that, I don't think it a big conversation, at least not while I was there. I just think that I'm hoping that we can come together with Sunderland and some of the surrounding towns into a smaller, not a council of governments, but a smaller group and get the same services and the same the, the same purchasing power that we're getting through them and not have the liabilities and the ongoing issues. So, yeah. you know. so we can try with, that, with the Franklin County. With, with what we just did, yeah, Marlowe's kind of doing with Franklin County Cog is the fuel. <coughs> yeah. uh, solid waste management. Uh, Fuel. Um, there's there's been a lot of issues, and there's Franklin County's really got got it together, and they, they do a good job for all the communities up in Franklin County and some of Hampshire County. Now. So maybe there's a regional point there that we can start, you know, leading in that direction and and moving forward that way. Mm -hmm. If that's the way that you know this board feels for this time anyway. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we need that benefits, but without all the liabilities and the shenanigans that go along with it. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame. I mean, to Gabriel's point, I mean, it, it was really a bad design right out of the gate. You know, um, people at the state level didn't think through it. It was all hip, hip, hooray, let's dissolve county government and save a couple of bucks, but here we are, it's been decades, but. At this point, I mean, wouldn't all the liabilities be there regardless whether the HEG succeeds or fails and so no matter what else you're doing still you still have these liabilities. Yeah, the existing liabilities right. you know, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have additional ones. Right. And you've got all the H C G employers. Now granted there aren't a lot, but they're who took raises. They're <laughs> yeah. The the one that they're there, that's accruing. So you and I had a conversation about the letter just uh, yeah. and I think I was just approaching you just to make sure that I understood what was being said. Uh, we talked about picking this conversation up. Is there any interest in exploring this outside of a select board meeting? The liability? Not you necessarily said. the liability, but each car in general. Each car in general. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, we still haven't really got an answer of the, the direction they're heading in. And, and obviously, they can't fund themselves anymore. At the end is here. You know. I was kind of already for looking at what the liabilities are going to be for the towns. Well, I figured Northampton, East Hampton, and Amherst are pretty torqued off right now, yeah. so I thought they had the uh, legal <laughs> dollars to wait and see what their lawyers <laughs> came up with. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, even even uh, going in with a bigger city wouldn't be a problem for a lot of the stuff that we're, that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And it's, just like you said, the school can we all can go elsewhere. It, it's. Wherever it's going to save the most money for the town and taxpayers, I mean, that's what you got to look at. And I will say, well, for those of you who know me, you know I'm ever the optimist. <laughs> but I've seen a lot of good momentum on the board with, you know, a few new board members and some of the committees. And it was a wake up call to the entire board after the whole audit crisis and the financial situation was kind of laid, laid bare. So there's been a lot closer attention paid to that. There's a plan to have another audit done to just update everyone on that and show that things are getting a little better on that front. So things are starting to turn around a little bit. The question is, is it too little too late? You know, can it be done quick enough? Um, and then what participation would look like from select board members or from other, you know, key personnel? It would be your time. But besides that, your participation in the HED doesn't really cost besides a couple thousand membership, which there's even discussion about reducing or eliminating those membership fees because they may or may not make sense moving forward. So in terms of like the, the ongoing liabilities or for liabilities beyond you know the sheet of what would fall to the towns, it doesn't really take too much beyond time to just sit down and talk about what could the services look like. Does it make sense to try and work more with Amherst and Northampton inside or outside of the HGD? I think you can have those regional level conversations in an HGD context, but a lot more good can come out of it, even if the answer isn't ultimately <coughs> HGD. 
So well, I don't know if there's a way to do it, but if there was a way to, I guess, absolve us of future liabilities and still have us participate in, in an HCOG type of group and kind of operate as, I don't know if it'd be like a nonprofit or something along those lines where they'd be basically be responsible for their own liabilities. I can see past liabilities that we're already liable for, mm -hmm. but for future liabilities, you know, and, and at that point that the, the organization folds at some point financially, then that's on them as their creditors to deal with so rather than. Already, it works like that because any liabilities that would be incurred by the HCG now would not fall to the town. These are only an issue because they existed before the HCG was formed and the HCG inherited them. So if the HCG went away, they would fall back to where they were before the HCG was formed, which was the county towns. Mm -hmm. right? So anything the HCG is doing now, besides the membership fee that Hadley pays, no matter how much debt they went into or how much they incurred, anything like that, nothing would fall to the towns. Even the existing employee benefits and retirements. Yeah. Yeah, just the already the old stuff. So like I said, it's, it's very little to keep participating, very little to be at the table and have the conversations beyond time, which is valuable. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, but that goes to us finding somebody who can right. continue on for you, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right, so that's what we need to do. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Gabriel. Ambulance service update. Um, we had a brief meeting um, to do an overview of the contract that uh, Chief Bank and Able had put together. Um, there'll be some uh, changes and updates, and it'll be emailed out to you on Friday. Uh, so you'll have a, a chance to look over the contract, and it's also going to be sent to action for them to have a chance to look over it. This is the first draft of it, um, actually, second draft, but it's with uh, changes that we looked at this evening. Um, so that will be coming to you on Friday, so you'll have a chance to look at and it. The f and the full ambulance. And the full ambulance too. committee also will, <coughs> will be receiving it also. Other announcements tonight. Um, David, you wanted to speak on um, an advisory, LED lighting advisory group committee to look into grants, state assistance, and other options for replacing our street lighting and building lights with LED so that we can save on electricity and maintenance. Right. Um, I spoke with Marlo and uh, also got some comments from the school maintenance department. And um, there's an interest in it. Uh, the, the issue is the cost, but um, from the conversation that I've had, there's possibly some money out there we could use from either Eversource or the state or other organizations. So what I'd like to do is um, Establish this advisory group, I guess it would be, rather than a committee. Mm -hmm. And um, if I could volunteer to be the liaison to that group, I'd that's even better. There. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? And uh, got my vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. And, and see what's out there and just see what our options are Certainly. and if we can afford to make some of these changes. So. Mm -hmm. That'd be great because I know this is something that people do bring up, like right. how come we haven't done anything with it and you know we've always said oh it's a cost issue and, and blah, so yeah. but there's yeah. a way some of the exterior lights on the schools have been converted over mm -hmm. but um, there's my understanding is to convert a lot of the interior lights and other of the exterior lights there's more than just changing the bulb there's other electrical stuff involved so that's part of the problem so, mm -hmm. so how would you like to go about this do you want there's to actually I've, I've been actually following it and there is some grant money available through solar and through the uh, green Energy, uh, you must the know CET about. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I, worked with people too uh, in the past that do that for a living. Yeah. Like they give you a quote on your whole facility yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to change it over to LED, and they try to work with like EverSource or whoever it would be here to see if there are savings and that kind right. of thing. So right. EverSource has been around over the past thirty years. I've been around, and they've done periodic updates on on the highway garage on the. Uh, communication center I believe they did uh, didn't they do a town hall here too at one point mm -hmm. um, but you know they only have so much in their grant program that they put forward and then the town has to pay the rest of it so you'd probably have to budget for it for the, the next yeah. next physical year to get it done or, or capital mm -hmm. so you know? certainly wouldn't hurt to have yeah. Um, yeah. an audit done on, on our building <coughs> things like that so for yeah, it's been a while. So. Yeah, just looking at the electric bills, talking to Marlowe about, um, especially town hall is 
horrible the amount of electricity that we that we spend on yeah. electricity. And even Russell School for nothing being in there, what we spend every month is, is crazy. But um, so what I'd like to do is to put it out there, get letters of interest, and then hopefully by next meeting we can do some selections. I've got a couple people that express the interest, but I'll get letters from them. So we can Sounds good. Sure. Sounds good to me. John? Can we do that for Hadley Media? Hadley Media, get something out for David on this LED lighting advisory group. If anybody has any oh, yeah. interests, um, definitely just put a letter you know, send a letter yeah, into the select board. board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then um, <coughs> do we have to vote on that? Are we good? Yeah, I don't think so. Do we need to? I don't think you need to vote on it. I'll put it into the June 6th uh, agenda right now. And then. Um, one quick question for you, if I can. I noticed there's a Northampton banner on the fence in front of Russell School for an event. Is that, I, I know this came up last year, a couple years ago, and what, what's our policy on out of town stuff? Yeah, so it's uh, put up there by a Hadley resident. Uh, town Council says that we have uh, First Amendment issues galore on this. We can't, we can't. We either have to allow no signs or we have to allow whatever signs people want to put up there. Not so it's a Hadley, Hadley resident. It's not a Hadley thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. But it okay. is a Hadley resident to put it's it up. It's a Hadley resident who put it up. And it's a toggle switch at this point, either ban them all or allow whatever. I see that going down a bad road in yeah. the center of town and what everybody sees, 50,000 cars a day, what can be put up there. So yeah. I just, and not that I have a problem with the church banner that's up there now, it's just what could it turn into. Yeah. I think so we've had this kind of on the watch list and we keep our fingers crossed. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's been talked about a few times. <clears throat> okay. okay, any announcements tonight from anybody? Got one. Uh, Saturday, um, North had the Shitter Shack. Uh, tractor pull, 10 a.m., mm -hmm. and uh, anybody who wants to register, um, I would give the Shitter Shack a call tomorrow, but uh, the registration's a little bit early, earlier, I'm not sure what time, but 10 a.m., hopefully the rain holds off so we can have tractor pull. Sounds good. I have one. Um, we have Stanley Sadowski that had retired from the DPW and Fire Department, where the Fire Department is putting on a barbecue. Uh, at the Young Men's Club on June 10th from 2 to 8. Um, and there are tickets available from Jessica at the town club, uh, fire department uh, personnel. Um, Tim O'Hare actually had some. He's a retired firefighter. I have to mention that because I did get my tickets from him already. Um, so everybody is open to the public. Um, come out and uh, have a good time on Sunday the 10th. <coughs> I'm not sure what they're going to have. Yeah. This is put on by the fire, fire department. department. Probably DJ. Okay. Oh, one last thing. Uh, yeah. Dog licenses. I know Kyle will want me to announce it. If you, mm -hmm. if, you, <laughs> if you haven't picked up your dog license yet, please stop by the clerk's office and pick it up. Or if you haven't renewed your dog right, license that too. Or if you have a new dog, please yeah. register it. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the dog house. So. Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to be doing an executive session of some yeah, sure. do we, have we anything, don't need to. Do we have any updates? No, we don't, actually. Yeah. I mean, actually, we have a meeting tomorrow um, with the Legion, um, and uh, seeing how that goes, there's just going to be a, a, I can't say it's a private meeting, but it's a um, meeting between our lawyers and their lawyer. and. Uh, their executive board and uh, to select board members. So we hopefully can, we would like to resolve this with them. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully we can make some headway tomorrow. Sit down's good. So Sit down's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So we'll have more update on that after that. And anything else? Entertain a motion to good night. A motion to adjourn. Second. Do you have anything? No, I don't, except that uh, we have a lot of stuff to sign. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Oh, wait, one, one quick question before we adjourn. Our, so our next meeting is the first week of June? Yep. I think David did weeks. announce that we have the Asparagus Festival on June 2nd. That's right. Yeah, that was in there. Yep. Okay. Okay. All in favor?
Thank you.